Welcome to a very special edition of the IC Porchcast. It's the Porchcast today because I am here with Jeff and Jody Chetwood, long-term IC staffers on their porch in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Brooke is joining us from Oklahoma, so she doesn't get to be on the porch with us today, unfortunately. But you do get to be with us on the porch virtually. Uh, You might hear some birds singing because there are real and dense tall, tall trees out here in North Carolina. You might also hear some construction next door, but we just want you to enjoy kind of the the atmosphere of the porch here with us while we talk about our staff retreat and serving the Lord and all sorts of things together. So Brooke, what exactly are we going to talk about today? First, welcome Jeff and Jody. We love having you guys and it's good to see you all again. I wish we could all be together, but for today's podcast, We'll be talking about our recent staff retreat that we just had in Denton, Texas, all together, and any takeaways we had from that. And we'll also get to hear from Jeff and Jody about their story of joining International Commission and their influence into missions. Um, and so we're really excited to hear from you guys. So thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Bucky. Thank all right. You. Yeah. We're, thanks for carving out time while we're here to do this. Uh, we yeah. did just get back from our staff retreat in Denton, Texas, near our home office. And so our staff from around the country and some from around the world gathered together for fellowship to listen to some speakers that were funny and encouraging and inspiring, play some games together, and just not worry about the the worky part of work stuff for for a week and just enjoy being together and encouraging each other Mm -hmm. and worshiping the Lord together. What are what are some of your favorite things or most most meaningful things from our staff retreat? Well, I'll start for just a, just a minute. All right. But being here in North Carolina, we are only involved with our staff through a Zoom call or a Teams call several times a week, and so it was wonderful to be there with one another and enjoy that fellowship, having meals together, prayer time together. As Bucky said, speakers that were inspiring and funny and just to unwind in the beautiful place that held our held our retreat camp copus and so it was it was a blessing for the fellowship for me personally how about you jeff probably the highlight was the last morning when we prayed together out by the lake near the uh, there are three crosses there at the campsite Mm -hmm. and we had communion there and then we had prayer for all the different areas of the world yes. and the evangelism that's taken place and the teams that were going to those places. It was a Holy Spirit moment. Absolutely. Uh, the anointing of the Spirit was present and it was it was very special. Beautiful way to end our time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you, Brooke? Yeah, one of my big takeaways, I love the fellowship just because I'm the only one in Oklahoma. And so getting to be together with everybody is really special. And I love fellowshipping with other believers. And so it was so encouraging. Getting to play games together was always fun. But one of my big takeaways was from one of our speakers. Uh, I, I think it was Dr. Jimmy Draper. So during one of the sessions when we were listening to him speak, he said, We don't need to figure out how to fulfill the Great Commission. And he said, just know the Lord, walk together, as in the church, walk together, and rebuke the devil. And I thought that that was really good because I think that even as a ministry, sometimes we want to figure out how to fulfill the Great Commission in a certain amount of time, in a certain way. But, you know, we don't have to do that. That's not for us. To, that's not the burden on our, our our backs is how do we fulfill the Great Commission? How do we figure this out? Like Jesus never tells us to, to figure it out, to come up with the best strategy because he gave us all of that we needed to do. And so I thought that that was really good and just kind of a freeing idea as well as we don't have to figure out the Great Commission. All we need is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And another thing that he said, which I think, follows along with that is magnify your time with the Lord. And so that's been something that's been on my mind is just how can I magnify my time with the Lord? And I think that it's hard to constantly have a magnified time with the Lord, but I think that that is how we'll accomplish the Great Commission is through magnifying our time with the Lord. Um, And so, you know, strategy is good and helpful. And I admire the people who have great strategy in mind because it is great and it is advancing the gospel. But you know, strategy doesn't fulfill the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit does. 
And so mm -hmm. I thought that that was really encouraging to hear that, especially because I'm not a huge strategizer when it comes to, okay, let's do all of this. We're going to, you know, expand into these new areas, get into the gaps. I admire the people who do that. I am not one of those people. I think that it is needed and it's good. But just, you know, just being faithful, magnifying your time with the Lord and having the Holy Spirit. Another one that he said was, we're not saved by understanding, we're saved by faith. Yes. And I think that when we share with people who don't have a lot of previous knowledge of Jesus and the Bible, we want to make sure that they understand everything before coming to Jesus, before saying mm -hmm. yes to Jesus. But we're not the ones who give them understanding. Again, the Holy yeah. Spirit is the one who gives them understanding. Jesus said, no one can come to the Lord unless God is drawing them first. And so our job is to give the truth and ask the Lord to give understanding. But even then, if we wait until we understand everything, we'll never move and we'll never obey. And so I thought that that was really good, especially spending time. And you guys have done this too, spending time with people who may have zero previous knowledge of Jesus. But if they have that faith to, to believe, then it's like, okay, that's what you need is you need faith because we're not saved by complete understanding. We're saved by faith. And there's things that we don't give to them, but they just understand by faith because the Holy Spirit has given that to them. And so I think that that is really good to remember, even as we've walked with the Lord for a long time, is we're not saved by our understanding and we don't have a deeper relationship with the Lord through understanding. We have it through faith because the Holy Spirit gives us understanding. And so those were some big things that I really liked, just really good truths that I don't think that we always think about. And so those are some big ones for me. What? And I want to ping pong off of that because when Dr. Draper said that, I thought of you and I thought of your uncle, Richard Stevens, who was our predecessor in Asia. 20 years ago, we took over Asia from Richard Stevens and we had 19 countries, one third of the world's population. Uh, they were four, four uh, communist countries, four Muslim countries, Myanmar and the Philippines where the Al-Qaeda was running around a different kind of place and most of them had never heard the name of Jesus. Five, six with two percent or less Christian, 15 with 10 percent or less Christian and here we are going to, to, that's my church now, these 19 countries in Asia and it was overwhelming and he said this is the verse that you quote John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man abideth in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you will do nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I keep saying that when I recognize the magnitude of where I'm called to tell the world about Jesus. Yeah, those were yeah. great words yeah. for us. Just I, what you're saying, Brooke, you know, just abiding more of God, less of the striving, if you will, you know, but mm -hmm. abiding. But there is so. a strategy and that is with International Commission and that is to go into every country of the world every year with the gospel yeah. because that's what Jesus commanded in the Great Commission. He laid out the, the, the magnitude of what we're to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, right. the real key to it right. and the thing that we need to, uh, to remember all the time while we're strategizing specifically mm -hmm. how we're going to reach places what we can't actually make it happen we right. we know right. what the lord has declared we know mm -hmm. what his will is we know what our assignment is and just like with evangelism we'll go and we'll sow the seeds and and we'll water when he gives us opportunity mm -hmm. but he has to give the growth oh, just yeah. like in our own mm -hmm. lives we have to be attached to the vine Amen. to see fruit when we're going and we're trying to find persons of peace and we're trying to find believers trying mm -hmm. to find ways into to hard to reach places it's only going to happen if god really opens those doors yeah. and, and we walk through them so we're just right. available and yeah. so a couple of weeks ago we had a vision to go to the ebon tribe former headhunters in malaysia i mean these were this is a different place and the two days before we had a team going from america and 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 uh, the flights were going to go over the middle east where the missiles were flying into israel uh, on Qatar Airlines, this was not going to work. And we had, you know, we're to be there, and, you know, we're to leave the next in two days. And the team in in Dallas 
spent 12 hours changing all our flights so that we didn't go over the Middle East. We went to Singapore. We went west. Yeah. And we still went. And we got the, the share with, yeah. with 65 longhouses in the Ebon tribes who had never allowed a Christian in there to share. Pastors had prayed for five years to go in the longhouse and they were rejected every time, but because of the prayers of those around the world and, and those that were praying for the projects, we went into 65 and at the end of the week, we had 42 churches in 65 and the rest we pray will one day, they are like beachheads yeah. in paganism and mm -hmm. Satanism and in shamanism and the, the word of Jesus, the gospel was proclaimed. Yep. Amazing. And he'll break through no matter what our That's understanding or lack of all the understanding is. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Someone may know nothing about Christ at all, right. or they may follow another religion, or they may be completely atheist, but we don't have to convince them. We just have to partner with God to open their eyes. So I appreciated that too, especially from Dr. Jimmy Draper. So that was one of my favorite things too. One of my yes. highlights was Dr. Jimmy Draper coming and talking. What I didn't know before I came to Texas about eight years ago to work with IC was that a lot of people around here and a lot of people just in the missions world and especially in the Baptist world know Dr. Jimmy and appreciate mm -hmm. him, especially around the Dallas-Fort Worth area mm -hmm. where, where he lives. Because years ago, he was my boss mm -hmm. when I was working at Lifeway Christian oh, yeah. Resources in Nashville. And so I really admired him then. And one of the reasons I admired him was his priority for missions and for lay people being in missions. And for the lay people, lay people means uh, people who are not professionally in, who are not full-time in ministry, uh -huh. uh, or church members uh, going about their, their regular jobs and things like that in the marketplace or home. Dr. Draper has always been really passionate about that. And so at Lifeway, he implemented, along with some other people, implemented a program for sending employees on short-term mission trips with partnering missions organizations. Wow. And International Commission was one of those. And I got mm -hmm. to go with International Commission as a Lifeway employee. And I won't tell the whole long story mm -hmm. of how I ended up here at IC, but that was an integral part of it. So that's how I knew Dr. Jimmy Draper. And so it was just really cool to kind of have that full, full circle moment of having him come yeah. to our staff retreat and share that with us. You so, know, for me, yeah. Jeff and I are becoming senior adults. That's funny for me to even say that. No, but I'm Dr. Dra <laughs> yeah, Doc 16. Dr. Draper was so inspiring to me. He desires to finish well on this side of heaven. And he's written a, new, a book recently about the Trinity and, and just basic truths that Brooke and Bucky have both shared. But I was so inspired by his determination to continue teaching and mentoring and discipling and writing a book. And he has spoken quite a bit when he was with the IMB, spoke quite a bit, even in North Carolina at our own large church here. And so to have him there with us personally at our retreat was, was a great gift to me. One of the things that caught my attention was that I realized that not everybody understands the magnitude of that Bible. And I went to seminary and, and learned that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, verbal, plenary, self-authenticated, inspired word of God. And an entire denomination had slid away from that over the years. But in the early 80s, it was pulled back to that understanding of the Bible. This is God's revelation mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit illuminates it in your heart as a believer. And this guy, Jimmy Draper, was the second president of the Southern Baptist Convention as it moved back to conservative theology. Mm -hmm. And Biblical. Theology. Adrian Rogers was number one. He was mm -hmm. the first. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden I knew this man was the big time. Yeah. Just that one mm -hmm. statement. God and has we used got him the in hearing at, yeah. at our retreat mm -hmm. for, for a little I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really special because we have considering the, the reach that this ministry has around the world. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing right now, we're seeing results of upward of four million and ten thousand. Yeah, salvations all over the world. You would not know that we have a, a small staff 
here in the U.S. And we've got the coordinators and, and uh, international partners and, and tens of thousands of volunteers all over the world. But our administrative staff here in the U.S. is very small. So mm-hmm. we it was fun to get together and just kind of think about that. Yeah. that we, we're just doing what we've all each individually and as a small team have been called mm-hmm. to and then to celebrate what God is doing all over the world through the churches we partner That's with. Right. And mm-hmm. it's just, just really awesome. Yeah. But got to have, have somebody of his caliber come and visit mm-hmm. with us was cool because yeah. we're, we're kind of small potatoes. <laughs> uh, the reach is not. We are. <laughs> we are. We're just, you know, we're just doing each day, day after day. What God has called us to do. Exactly. So that was cool. Yeah. I, I, I have... I have worked with different organizations, and I don't know of any organization that has that kind of numbers for a year as International Commission. The big Power boys God unto uh, are doing amazing work, but guess what? This little little organization with almost no money just to go and tell the world about Jesus, and so we're going, and we're doing just what Jesus said in the Great Commission. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Your mm-hmm. hometown, the United States of America, your your neighboring countries, and to the ends of the earth. It reminds me of us being kind of a Gideon, yeah. sort of, you know, yeah. a Gideon ministry of just the Lord using a really small amount of people to do something that we can't do on our own, obviously, just to show that it's like, this isn't you, this is the Lord doing this, and so... Yeah, how small of a stateside staff we are. And then just looking at the magnitude of what God has accomplished. And most of it is not anything that we ourselves have done. It's just what the Lord has done and accomplished. And then I think that's what how God gets glorified is whenever it's small groups that, you know, go kind of unnoticed. But he notices and he uses just the small things to accomplish really mm-hmm. mighty and awesome That's right. works all around the world. Throughout the world. Yeah. We all give God all the glory. We have not saved one, but we have watched him save millions. Mm-hmm. And the Gideon example, what was it, 32,000? Yeah. Down to 300. Down to 300. Down yeah. to 300 so that God would get the glory, not man. That's, That's right. right. We really have a, a family relationship and a family yes. atmosphere when we do get together. And we can celebrate those things, knowing mm-hmm. that we're just all humans mm-hmm. and we see each other's humanness and and can celebrate what God is doing in and through us, but also despite us. us. Yes, yes, exactly. But we also realize that we have our limitations and we need rest. But I think rest is something that we have a hard time with mm-hmm. as Western Christians and especially American Christians, where we're very schedule oriented and go, go, go. Yep. But uh, we need to rest. God made us to rest, and He gave us rest, gave us the Sabbath as a gift. And so being able to just hang out together, rest together, and play games together, and enjoy music together is also really, really rich. And, and I mean, it's, it's also, it's fun, but it's a good investment of time. Absolutely. We played board games, card games, yeah. trivia games. We played bocce ball, putt-putt golf. Did a little skits. Yeah, little skits trying to make each other laugh, too. And Show and tell. Oh, yeah, show and tell was a highlight. <laughs> Somebody want to talk about the show and tell? She was my show and tell. Yeah, Steph and I got to show and tell about our 53 years together. And our um, first date. Yeah, first date. So all of that was fun. <clears throat> Brooke got to share something very special. Oh, yeah. I got to show a picture of the ultrasound of our son who's coming Yay. on September. <laughs> and so it was very sweet. And, yeah, that was another thing is just feeling all the celebration with yeah. believers that I don't get to see except a few times each year you know sometimes even only once a year and so that was really sweet just as soon as I saw all of you just so much celebration with me and yeah this is just something that we had prayed for for a long time that the Lord would give us a child and so it was really sweet getting to to celebrate getting to rejoice together getting to laugh together laughter is such a wonderful (laughs) gift and so it it was such a good time but it was so sweet getting to see everyone's show and tell. Some of them were really 
meaningful and sentimental. Some of them were practical and just funny. And yeah, so it was, it was a good I, time. Something that stood out from, to me from the show and tell was just that a few of us talked about little tokens that we had that really, it, it wasn't about the object itself or the photo, but it was about the story behind yeah, it and ways, ways that God has showed us that he cares about the little things yes. and the ways that God really gives us the desires of our heart in ways that we, we can't even earn them. The way, ways that God has blessed some of us, surprised some of us just with, with kindnesses that aren't necessary. Mm -hmm. But we know they're from God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We know they're from God. And I'll just give a quick example. What mine was, I have a little airplane that I got in the 80s when I was flying, you know, back and forth from Germany as an, an army brat. And I always wanted to fly on the upper deck of a Boeing, of a, a 747 on a Lufthansa flight because we flew on those and I never even got to see the upper deck. And I just thought it would be so cool if one day I got to do that. And, you know, fast forward in time, I never did. I never got to a place where I was making a lot of money and able to, to, to earn that privilege, but I got bumped on a flight and I thought I lost my seat. But when I walked through, when I checked in to go through the jetway, they handed me a ticket and it was first class upstairs yes. where I definitely do not belong. But according to the king of the universe, I do sometimes <laughs> get to have that privilege. So because of him and because of me, not at all, he gave me that little treat. And there were several stories like that. And I just yeah. thought that was really cool. Yes. <clears throat> yes. But Jeff and Jody, yours was yeah. about your time at IC. So let's, let's move on to another segment and talk okay. a little bit about that. It's story time. So Jeff and Jody, tell us a story about you all joining International Commission and your work in missions and your influence. Just tell us all about that. I was in the business world and I accepted Jesus at the age of 37. Jody accepted Jesus at the age of 26 and I was her mission field for 12 years. She would, she would share everything she heard in a Bible study as I was studying for the CPA exam. And, and I mean, I would listen and I would study and I would listen and I would study. But at finally at the age of 37, I prayed to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord and everything changed. Mm -hmm. uh, God called me to tell the world about Jesus. And so over the next few years, I was chief financial officer. I'd worked with a big eight accounting firm. I'd worked for Haynes companies for 10 years. But God called me to quit my job, to go tell the world about Jesus. I had no income. I had a family of three. We had a huge mortgage. In two months, I figured we would be on the street. But God called me to tell the world about Jesus. Mm, that's right. Uh, bottom line is we spoke with the Billy Graham Association, Christian Life and Witness course for a couple of crusades Billy Graham was doing. Here in America, I went to seminary, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, no money, and, and I don't know how it all worked because it was of God. Yeah. Three years later, uh, I finished and I was the intern at a big church here in uh, North Carolina, Calvary Baptist Church under Mark Quartz for the, the summer. And then we were appointed to plant a satellite church of Calvary which we did in a high school. I said, I don't understand how Southwest Guilford High School is the ends of the earth, but I guess I'll go. We were there for, for four and a half years planting this church. We were on TV. I was living in a fishbowl. Uh, I mean, I was on TV all the time. We couldn't go into a restaurant with everybody not turning around in the restaurant. Uh, a different kind of time. And then they had a new pastor uh, who came. He had a different vision. And so uh, we waited upon the Lord for a year and a half. Uh, and during that year and a half, we had gone on a mission trip to India with International Commission. The International Commission, because at the big church, all the pastors had to go on a mission trip every other year. And so we went to India. And we saw 7,710 pray to receive Jesus. And in two weeks, it had grown to 17,000. And I had never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. That was the movement of the Holy Spirit. That was Lifeway, 54 on our team. And most of them were Lifeway. They stayed in Gunter. And we went, we went uh, to another city, four of us, and we shared the gospel. And I said, wow. Yeah. And so... 
when I was waiting on the Lord because I was called. I wasn't going back into the business world where I could have made a bunch of money. <laughs> no, 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 no. Called to tell the world about Jesus. Uh, he, we eventually ended up at International Commission in right. Dallas, Texas. And I went in and I spoke with the president. I said, I want to go where they kill you for the name of Jesus. He said, I got the perfect place. <laughs> Laos. They'll put you under the jail. They don't care what the world says. I said, that's a, a vice president of Asia. I said, that's what I want to do. Then he said, but you got to raise your entire support. And I go, what? I don't have a salary. <laughs> How am I going to support my family? I, I got to support my family. Well, I pondered that for a year. My daddy had said, don't ever borrow any money from anybody. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You take care of it all. And I realized after a year, me asking for money, I could not do that for myself. But after a year, I realized I wasn't asking for money for me. I was asking money for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I can ask everybody for money for Jesus. And so that changed everything. And I went back and I said, yes. And we began in 2004 Four. Yep. on staff. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in for just a minute because the Lord did not call me to tell the world about Jesus, but God graciously by his Holy Spirit counseled me when Jeff left his profession, it was a peace that passes understanding. I supported that wholeheartedly. And really my calling was to stand with my man, that we would do this as a twosome. And I really had never shared the gospel before going on that trip in, to India in 2002. But International Commission equipped me to do that. That's part of what IC does. They will equip the team going to another country. And then when we get there, we are equipping the Christians there who maybe have never shared the gospel at all. But there was one great verse that the Lord gave me through all of that to keep my mind at peace, my heart at peace, and my eyes open. It's from Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And when International Commission offered us a position on staff, yes, raising our ministry partners, it seemed to be overwhelming, but the Lord was saying, this is the way, walk in it. And we have never looked back. God has faithfully provided our predecessor, Richard Stevens, traveled with us to many of the different countries in Asia to introduce us. That's what you do in Asia. You don't just send them an email to say you've got a new person working. They need to see your face. And in so doing, Richard prepared us and for the work the ahead. He knew the culture. And it's just been a great journey and a, a great privilege. And from that trip in 2002, we were never the same. And when we returned from that trip in 2002, some doors began to close here on state side for ministry and International Commission opened up to us. And that's been 20 years ago. So we give God all the glory. That's my little two cents. And so in that time period, we've gone to Mongolia, China, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Ind Indonesia, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, uh, Hong Kong, and Singapore. The only one we hadn't been in yeah. is North Korea. Have not actually been but to we We've had projects in all the others, and we are having national and national projects in all yeah. those countries. It's all the Lord. Jody, I love the verse that you shared. That was actually a verse that I read within the past few weeks, and it really struck my heart of just the, the teacher telling you, this is the way, walk in it. And so I think that that's really beautiful, just yeah. remembering that our teacher tells us where to go. And that's really cool that the Lord, 
I mean, just through the course of your marriage, how God worked in both of your yeah. hearts in different ways, how he was working in your heart to, you know, talk to Jeff and to lead him, yeah. point him to Jesus. And then how Jeff working in your heart to, to work with Jody, you know, after you felt this call to missions. And so it's so cool how the Lord yeah. does it's that within humbling. our hearts, you know, and it's at different points. It's like very humbling yeah, to share. So I cool. even have this fun. verse from Isaiah 30, 21 framed, and it just stays on my dresser. And, you know, there will be other opportunities for seeking God's will, not, I mean, even within international commission, is this, is this the right gatekeeper? And faithfully, God will show us, this is the one, this is the way, walk in it. And it just becomes a walk of faith, of course, with great rewards. Yeah. Praise Him. So you all have done a lot of work, primarily in Asia. So is there an area of the world that the Lord is really just a certain country that you guys really love to go back to that you've seen the Lord do yes. really miraculous things this um, time and again. The last one we're in is the one our, we leave our hearts in. I mean, <laughs> yeah. over and over and over yeah. and over. You see things. I have stories that will curl your hair. People hear the stories. They look at me and I invite them to go with me and they say, you're a little bit out there. I don't know about that. But then they look at Jody and they say, but she went. So if she's going, I guess I, they don't understand it where I go and she goes and they're going. That's and, right. And when they get back, it rocks their world. There's a beautiful dependence on the Lord when and, you are in they another rock culture. The church they yeah. came from, they turned that church okay. upside down in America. They've seen God show God do what they have never seen before. And they are blown away yeah. and they're never the same. Yeah. But Brooke, to answer your specific mm. question, I think Cambodia and Myanmar for me, are my two, if I could even say favorite, I, I hate to even use that term, but I love it. You're, you're really stepping back in time and going into areas where it's not modernized and people have very little. And in those kinds of situations, the Lord will heal. The Lord will open hearts because they have they have nothing else, you know? And so we have, right. we've just seen mighty miracles of God. Another thing I love about going is with a first time participant, someone who God has stirred their hearts to go to a country and international commission gets them ready. Brooke, I know you're part of that staff that will prepare someone. This is, this is how you, this is what you're going to do when you get there. It's never random, you know, it's all prayerfully Operation Andrew has taken place. So we enter a country, the preparation work has been done, and the, the local pastors who have agreed to receive us, actually it begins with an invitation from churches to come. And when we arrive in a country, no matter the level of socioeconomic, they are prepared with visits to the lost and dying, and we go with them and share. And so to see a first time participant get to experience that, it just brings all that joy back of what we, our own experience in India in 2002. That's a, a beautiful thing about International Commission. Our focus is the gospel, sharing the gospel in the power of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. When, and it changes you from the when, inside out. When I went to seminary, my missions professor, who had been an IMB missionary in Africa for 12 years, he said, you know, out of America, 95% of the mission trips are to the Caribbean. They build a church. They dig a well. They hand out food. They hand out blankets. They do this. They, they paint a wall. The gift we bring is the only message that will change your eternity, the gospel message. And that person's eternity is changed from the fires of hell to heaven. And in that moment, the darkness in their eyes turned to light and the faces of dejection turned to the joy from a heart on fire for Jesus. And that person is a different person from that point forward. It's a, it's a transformation that you see. Yeah. The Just greatest miracle ever. 
one by one by one. Yeah, by there one. are healing ministries left and right. Yes, demons come out of demon-possessed people. Yes, but their eternity when they pray to receive Jesus. Whoa. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I love that you all mentioned Richard Stevens. My uncle Richard, who also influenced me greatly in missions, and so it was really cool getting to join and hear of how yes. he also influenced you all into missions as well. And the first, so the first mission trip I had gone to was actually to Guatemala, and it was a working mission trip. We helped to build a road, and the the focus was not on the gospel. But before then, I knew that. I needed to go and share the gospel. And so I remember asking the Lord to give me an opportunity to share the gospel with someone who spoke English. And I remember talking to some people on my team and I said, you know, this is good, but we need to share the gospel. Like that's the most important thing. And she said, oh, well, you're kind of doing it second handedly, you know, you know, you're giving something. And I was like, that's not what, that's not what sharing the gospel is. It's not second handed. You know, you have to speak and tell the truth. And so I was praying and there was another girl on my team who we became amazing friends after that. And she also had that mission mindset of sharing the gospel. And so we were praying and there was a man who had come by and we, we said, hola, we said hi to him in Spanish. And he said, hi, back in English. And we're like, oh, you speak Spanish. And so, or you speak English. And so we got to share the gospel with him. And I had no idea what I was doing. I just, I was like, (laughs) I didn't know what I was doing. But the Lord helped me in that. And so that was really special. But then the following year, I got to go with my uncle Richard. He invited me to go to China with him. And that was really special. And we didn't have house visits. It was a different kind of, you had to strategize a little bit on how you shared the gospel there. But getting to share the gospel there was really incredible as well. And so his influence in in my yes. life is so cool. And I know yes. that he's influenced a lot of other And what a legacy. Well, so. Another thing I want to just mention is that in these Asian countries, relationships are developed that are like family. And we saw that when Richard was introducing us to the different leaders in the different countries. They were so very close. And I would say in the last 10 or 12 years, we've been able to have individuals in one Asian country, if they can speak English and share the gospel in English, go to another country where they've never been. So we've had the cross-pollinizing going on with folks from Myanmar joining us in Cambodia or from Indonesia joining us in Malaysia. And it's an international opportunity for them while remaining in Asia. But it's it's been so encouraging for us to see their faith grow as their world vision, you know, grows in sharing the gospel in other countries. That's been great. I think that that's something really cool that IC does is they encourage people from other countries to go to their neighboring countries. And I think that that's amazing. Bucky and I had talked one of the first podcasts of, I don't remember where they are from Bucky, but maybe uh, Malaysia or something, Malaysian believers going to Japan. Yes. Yeah. And so I thought that that was really cool. And, you know, they saw a lot of closed doors, but they were just so excited. And and as I've been more influenced and exposed to missions, I realized, okay, there's, there's, the Lord is working in people all around the world to, to share the gospel. And so I think that's really cool. Something that IC does is encourages people from different countries to join our, our right. teams to go and share the gospel, just to show even the people that we're going to, it's not just, you know, the Lord working in Americans exactly. to go and share the gospel. The Lord wants all people yeah. to be about equipping uh, and enabling mission. around the world. Yeah, man, we just, we've got, we've got so many resources that God has blessed us with here in the U S that mm-hmm. we just, we have, we have an opportunity and, and a responsibility, I think too. I mean, it's not a burden, but mm-hmm. it is a responsibility, yes, a responsibility to, to go and also to, to send, to equip and enable, which is why we do what we do. And, and, why we do it the way we do it mm-hmm. but the reality is we, we've got a lot of disadvantages just so far as like when it comes to a perspective and understanding and just biases that we don't know that we mm-hmm. have and mm-hmm. so sending people from other cultures and other countries who do have a similar worldview to another place they're trying to reach or another people that yes. they're trying to reach and can just communicate yes. a lot more clearly uh, that's just such a huge advantage and such a privilege to to be able to do that and i just i love seeing that God yeah. is 
doing a lot of mission sending from, you know, what, what some people call the global South, South yes. America, Africa, Asia. And we just, we want to be part of that too. Yeah. Think, think about this. It used to be, it was all Americans going on mission trips and uh, five or 10 mission trips, two mission trips expanded to 20, expanded to 30, expanded to 50. But in the nineties, they started doing national and national after a mission trip, the nationals would go do it. Well, guess what? Today, 467 national to national projects yeah. are happening this year. 2024. Uh, 2024 mm-hmm. with 20 international projects because we have trained up evangelists all over the world and they will evangelize their nation. Yes. They will evangelize the nations next to them. Amen. And God is doing ping pong all over the world. Mm-hmm. It's like that little vision thing you had in science where the ping pong balls are on the, the mouse trap and you throw one in and it bounces and all of a sudden they're all bouncing. That's happening all over the world. Mm-hmm. My God's Holy Spirit. The chain yep. reaction of reaction. multiplication. Yep. That, yeah, That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a neat story. I, I wasn't mm-hmm. even planning to use this one, but we were recently in Thailand on the upper border of Thailand, bordering Cambodia. And we had a couple, they were newlyweds from Cambodia. And the husband of this couple had been an interpreter on many of our IC projects in Cambodia. So he wanted to come to Thailand because he could clearly share the gospel in English. Well, he could do it in English and in Thai, exactly. He could speak either one. And he brought his young bride. She looked like they do in Thailand, was Cambodian, had come from a Buddhist background. And as we went into high schools, when she stood to give her testimony, everyone thought it was going to be in Thai, but it wasn't. It was in Khmer. So they quickly listened. Who are you? What are you even saying? And then her husband would translate into Thai, what she was saying in Kemer, so beautiful. She had never shared her testimony publicly. So she got to do this four or five times in schools and she could say to them, I was a Buddhist like you are today. And this is what my worldview was. This is what I thought to be true. And then I met Jesus Christ. She actually had come to Christ through her husband. She had worked at a coffee shop and he visited her over and over, shared the evangel cube with her and she prayed to receive Christ. So now they are in ministry in Cambodia and they've recently had this international experience together in Thailand. And we watched her confidence grow as the Lord would place her in front of upper high school students, even young college. Yeah. And she would begin her testimony. And by the end of the week, she was just sharing her story so freely and so powerfully. A beautiful young lady, her eyes danced. Jeff loved to say her eyes danced, and they did. (laughs) Uh, But, I mean, this is the one who connected with those kids. Right. She She became our one that we would put out front, and the Lord used her mightily. That was a beautiful thing for us to see because she was really just coming along for the ride to Thailand. She couldn't speak, couldn't speak English, couldn't speak Thai, but the Lord raised her up for that time, for that season. Awesome. That's so cool. Well, we're drawing close to the end of our time here for this podcast. We're sorry. I know you're enjoying this, but guess what? You can spend time with us in real life. You can go to Asia and see some of these things for your own self. Uh, Just go to our website, internationalcommission.org slash go. uh, And you can look at our list of international partnership trips that are coming up uh, and apply to go with us. You don't have to do any of the planning. You don't have to do any of the strategy and scheduling and all that stuff we were talking about earlier. You just sign up, 
raise your funds and pray and prepare to go. Amen. We can even teach you how to share your testimony yep. if you don't know how. We'll write so, it in the language of the country. That's right. And going. and you'll, we'll give you those bilingual tools so you can go and share the gospel in their language. But you also have interpreters. You'll have local believers to, to work alongside who've been doing all the preparation. So really the only thing up to you is saying yes. So go ahead and sign up and, and go and see what God is doing in Asia. It's really, You'll really incredible. Amazed. You also can be a part of equipping, sending, funding mm-hmm. these national to nationals that we've been talking about where it's just the nationals uh, doing this on their own within their own country or neighboring countries. And so if that story inspired you, guess what? You can, you can help them continue uh, doing that. Yes. You can help spread the gospel uh, places where we'll never be able to reach mm-hmm. or won't be able to, to access and communicate as clearly as the people there can. So mm-hmm. you can do that by supporting national to nationals into ends. And you can go on our website and learn about that as well. Or just contact us and we'd love to tell you more about it. Whether you go, whether you give, whether you pray, we're all in the great condition together. And let's just keep equipping and enabling each other until everyone is heard. Thanks for joining us and thanks Jeff and Jody for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for coming.